getting ready to go home with your baby. Congratulations on the birth of your baby. This short film aims to cover some information that you and your partner may find useful as you get ready to take your baby home from hospital. We understand it can feel like a lot to take in, so please feel free to press pause at any point if you need to. If you have any questions, please don't be afraid to ask. If you'd like to know more about anything covered in this video, there's lots more useful information available on the Healthier Together website. Following the birth of your baby, the midwives and doctors will talk to you about your recovery and help you decide the best time for you to go home. This can vary depending on how well you and your baby are. You will find lots of useful information for new mothers on the Healthier Together website or you can ask your midwife any questions at your appointments. Before you leave, make sure our staff have the right address and phone number for you so we can arrange your next appointment. When you go home, you'll be under the care of the community midwifery team. Your appointment may take place over the phone, in a community hub or at your home. If you need further support, you can contact your midwife or the postnatal ward if it is outside of routine working hours on the phone numbers provided. Your health visitor will contact you in the first two weeks to arrange an appointment. The health visiting team can support you and your family until your child reaches school age. For babies born prematurely or with extra health needs, you may also have follow-up appointments with the neonatal community service. The physical recovery from pregnancy and birth is different for everyone. During the six weeks after birth, your body will slowly begin the process of getting back to its pre-pregnancy state. It's important to remember that this happens at a different pace for everyone and some women take longer to recover than others. After birth, you will experience vaginal bleeding, similar to that of a heavy period. You may have one or two quite large clots, the size of a tomato or satsuma, or several smaller ones, about the size of a grape, during the first two to three days. Over the following days and weeks, your blood loss should reduce in quantity. It may even completely stop, but then restart a few days later. This is normal. It's just your body getting itself ready to begin its menstrual cycle again. If you are breastfeeding, you may find your blood loss is initially slightly heavier just after feeding your baby. You may also find that when your postnatal bleeding stops completely, your period may not return for many months. If you have any worries, please look for further information on the Healthier Together website or ask your midwife. You may experience pain similar to mild labour pains after the birth. After pains following birth are normal and not a cause for concern. You may notice these are worse if you have had more than one child. Some women notice after pains whilst breastfeeding. You should expect after pains to improve day by day as your womb or uterus returns to its normal size. Taking regular paracetamol, one gram every four to six hours, not exceeding four grams in 24 hours, and ibuprofen, two to 400 milligrams, three to four times a day, will help with the discomfort. Please avoid taking medication that contains codeine if breastfeeding. After birth, some women need stitches to their perineum. This is the area between your vagina and your bottom. The length of time it takes for these to heal is very individual and depends on the type of tear. Keeping your perineal area as clean and dry as possible, changing your maternity pads frequently and washing your hands before and after going to the toilet will help to reduce the risk of infection. If you experience an increase in pain from your stitches, notice an unpleasant smell or discharge, then please let your midwife or GP know so they can check them for you. If you have had a third or fourth degree tear, a follow-up appointment will be made for you so we can be sure it is healing well. Your pelvic floor muscles are the group of muscles you would use to stop yourself passing wind and for holding in a wee. The pelvic floor are weakened by pregnancy and birth, so we advise doing exercises to help strengthen them again to prevent future problems. Generally, these exercises are tricky immediately following birth, but it gets easier in the coming weeks. 
try and make them a part of your daily routine. You may like to download the Squeezy app for information and reminders. Some women are advised by their midwife to wear special stockings after the birth to reduce the risk of blood clots in the legs. This advice will depend on the type of birth and any additional risk factors you may have. You are at your highest risk of developing a blood clot just after having your baby, so tell your midwife or another healthcare professional if you experience pain in your lower leg or redness, swelling or pain in your groin. There are some signs that we ask you to look out for and report to a health professional. These include fainting, dizziness, palpitations, when your heart feels like it's beating fast or you notice your heartbeat, abdominal pain, fever, shivering, headaches with blurred vision, nausea and vomiting, flu-like symptoms, shortness of breath or chest pain. If you feel unwell or experience pain after your baby is born, please look at the information on the Healthier Together website, call your midwife or the postnatal ward if it is out of hours. In an emergency, call 999. Pregnancy and birth can cause many strong emotions. It is important to talk about how you feel with your midwife and other health professionals and also your partner, family and friends. It is very normal to become really teary and emotional around day three. You may have heard of this period described as the baby blues. Your hormone levels are high, you are likely to be very tired, and the adjustment to new family life can feel overwhelming for many women. These are very normal feelings and they may fluctuate over the first seven to 10 days. If after two weeks you feel that you are still feeling down, depressed or hopeless and have little interest in doing things, then please speak to your health visitor or see your GP. Your GP can give you ongoing emotional support and signpost you to other health professionals if needed. Please listen to your family and friends if they have any concerns regarding your emotional well-being, as it is often loved ones who notice you may need extra support. There are no rules about when to start having sex again after you have given birth, but it's important that you are aware that you are fertile and could conceive again from approximately 21 days following birth. Exclusively breastfeeding is not a reliable form of contraception and other methods such as condoms, pills, injections, implants or the coil are recommended to avoid becoming pregnant again too soon. Many of these can be started immediately after birth. If you are breastfeeding and you would like to use a hormonal contraception, then you will be advised to have a progesterone only option. If you or your partner are a smoker and would like help with quitting, please let your midwife or GP know. They will be more than happy to help you with this, or you can self-refer to your local quit smoking service. There is a range of free help available, including nicotine replacement therapies. Smoking around your baby increases the risk of sudden infant death syndrome, also known as SIDS or cot death. If you plan to continue, please smoke outside, away from your baby, and wash your hands and change your clothes wherever possible before going near your baby. If you have a background medical condition or a new medical condition diagnosed in pregnancy, your healthcare team will outline the future plan with you before you go home. It may be important for you to see your GP for ongoing tests and further treatments. You may have delayed your screening for cervical cancer whilst you are pregnant. Please remember to rebook this once your baby is over 12 weeks old. Legally, you must register your baby within 42 days of their birth. You can use the government website to find your closest registry office and follow the links to their website for contact details and how to book an appointment. If you are married or in a civil partnership, then only one parent needs to attend. If you are unmarried and want both parents to be on the birth certificate, you will need to attend together. Your GP would like to see you once your baby is six to eight weeks old. This is for a final postnatal check on you and a repeat of the newborn and infant examination that your baby would have had soon after they were born. 
Some GP practices prefer you to register your baby at the surgery before the appointment and this can be done once you have registered your baby's birth and you have a birth certificate. As a new dad or partner, you will feel excited but you may also feel left out, unsure or overwhelmed. The regional dad pad is a resource available to all partners to give you the knowledge and practical skills that you need. There is plenty of information on the Healthier Together website about understanding what is normal for a newborn baby. Please look under New Baby, What's Normal and What's Not and Concerns About My Baby's Health. It has lots of information if you are concerned your child is unwell and where to get help. Your midwife or maternity support worker will offer to weigh your baby at intervals once you are at home. It is normal for most babies to lose some weight in the first few days, but the staff will check that this is the normal range and will offer support with feeding if needed. Your community midwife will want to see you on day five to do the newborn blood spot test. This is when a small spot of blood taken from your baby's heel is checked for rare diseases that include cystic fibrosis, sickle cell disease, congenital hypothyroidism, and six inherited metabolic diseases. There is lots of information about this test on the Healthier Together website. Around half of newborn babies will develop a condition called neonatal jaundice. This is where their skin appears yellow. Jaundice doesn't usually cause your baby any problems. However, if you notice your baby's skin, eyes or gums are yellow, or if your baby becomes reluctant to feed, sleepy and difficult to wake, call your midwife as your baby will need to be checked over by a healthcare professional that same day. Regular feeding will help to naturally reduce the bilirubin levels, causing your baby's skin to look yellow. Your baby's umbilical cord will dry and eventually fall off between 3 to 10 days old. Please keep the cord area clean by wiping around it with cotton wool and water every day. You do not need to wait until the cord and clamp have fallen off before bathing your baby, but make sure it's dry before dressing your baby. You can fold over the top of your baby's nappy to expose the cord to air to encourage drying sooner if you prefer. If you notice the cord area is bleeding, oozing or developing a nasty smell, then please let your midwife know. Once the cord and clamp have fallen off, carry on cleaning the umbilical area until it has healed. All babies have a strong desire to be close to their parents as this helps them feel more secure and loved. Having your baby close to you will help you learn their cues when they are hungry or need a cuddle. Breast milk is tailor-made for babies to provide all the nutrients and comfort and protection that they need. You may find that the early days of establishing breastfeeding, it may take a while to feel confident. The most common challenges can resolve quickly and easily with the right support. There is lots of help in your local area, so please reach out if you have any questions or concerns. Babies cannot be overfed at the breast, so you can use breastfeeding to soothe your baby as well as a way of spending time together or have a rest when you both want to. If you are using a bottle to feed your baby, please ensure you follow the guidance to make up and give milk as safely as possible. Enjoy holding your baby close during feeds with lots of eye contact. Learn how to do paste bottle feeding to notice the cues when they want to be fed and when they have had enough. Babies who are drinking well will regularly pass urine stools and wake up frequently on their own to feed. You can keep a close eye on their nappies and their behaviour to know when they are feeding well. From birth, all breastfed babies should be given a daily supplement of vitamin D. That's 8.5 to 10 micrograms. But if your baby is having more than 500 milliliters, about a pint, of first infant formula a day, they don't need a supplement because formula is already fortified with vitamin D. 
Breastfeeding mothers are also encouraged to take a supplement of 10 micrograms a day. Ensuring your baby is safely settled for sleep is important to help prevent sudden infant death, also known as SIDS or cot death. You can reduce the risk of SIDS by adopting some safe sleeping advice. The key points to remember are keeping your baby smoke free. Don't let smoke near them or hold them after smoking. Don't fall asleep with a baby on the sofa or chair. The safest place for your baby to sleep is in your bedroom in their own cot or Moses basket or a bedside crib for the first six months. Put your baby to sleep on their back with their feet to the bottom end of the cot. Breastfeed if you can. Co-sleeping, that sleeping in the same bed as your baby, can be dangerous either if you or your partner smoke, have been drinking or take any drugs including medication that can make you feel drowsy, or if your baby was born at a low birth weight or prematurely. It is important to keep pillows, sheets and blankets away from the baby. Don't let your baby get too hot. Keep a clear cot free from toys so no loose blankets, pillows or cot bumpers should be used. If you have any questions about safe sleeping, you can speak to your midwife or health visitor. The amount of baby cries varies hugely. A baby's cry is designed to get your attention. And it's okay to find that frustrating when you don't know what it is your baby wants. From the age of two weeks, infant crying generally increases, reaching a peak at around six to eight weeks before starting to reduce. There are various things you can try in order to soothe your baby. Holding them, gently rocking, walking them around, taking them for a walk in the pram or sling are all methods you may find useful. It is never okay to shake your baby but it is okay to leave your baby in a safe place and walk away momentarily. Providing your baby is in a safe place, give yourself a chance to regroup for a few minutes, then return to your baby when you feel calmer. Remember, it's very normal for babies to cry sometimes. It is normal to find it hard at times and it's worth having the support of family and friends. If you're ever concerned about the level of your baby's crying, please read further information on the Healthier Together website or seek advice from a healthcare professional. Babies should travel in the right car seat for their age, weight, facing backwards, and ideally secured by Isofix or the car seat belt on the rear seats. If you travel with your baby on the front seat of your car, make sure the passenger airbag has been switched off and the baby is rear facing in the car seat. It is unsafe for your baby to wear coats and snowsuits whilst in the car seat traveling in the car. So tuck a blanket around them if it's cold. If it's too warm in your car to wear a coat yourself, then your baby is likely to get too warm in a coat. Try not to let your baby spend too long in a car seat. There is no published evidence of how long a baby should stay in a car seat, but car seat manufacturers recommend that this is for no longer than two hours. Taking your baby out and laying them flat at regular intervals is advised. Pets may find it unsettling once you arrive at home with your new baby. Give your pet time to get used to the new smells and noises and don't force them if they want to hide temporarily. We recommend not leaving your pet alone with a baby or toddler and keeping toys separate. Your baby's skin has never seen any sun and is very sensitive. It's a good idea to keep your baby out of direct sunlight and cool in the shade, wearing sunscreen higher than 30 SPF when needed. It can be dangerous to place a muslin or cover your baby's pram for shade as this increases the temperature around your baby and can lead to overheating. Please give us your feedback on your care and help us improve the service we offer by completing the friends and family questionnaire. You can do this via your Badger notes. You may feel the need to talk to a midwife about your birth experience, if you have a specific questions you'd like answered, things you can't remember or are unsure of. 
Your midwife can give you details about the service within your hospital to support you with this. If you would like to be a part of a group to help improve maternity services, you can get in touch with your local Maternity Voices Partnership via Facebook. Now, please download the Healthy Together Urgent Care app, which will be there for you if you're worried your baby is unwell and assist you with accessing help. Please don't forget, there is loads of information held on the Healthier Together website to support you with your new baby. This includes the following sections. Postnatal information section, which is full of advice literature, concerns about your own health as a new mom, mental health topics, concerns about your baby's health, infant feeding, worried my baby is unwell over three months, and much more. Please discuss any questions you may have with your midwife. Thank you for watching this video. We hope you find it helpful. If you have any questions about anything we have mentioned or anything else at all, please don't be afraid to ask.